Welcome to Real Physics. Today I have to do a little reaction video because you know Sabine Hossenfelder put out that famous video in which she revealed an email from a top scientist where she admitted fraud that is applying for grants under false premises. And today I want to talk just about the legal aspects here because what happened is that the so-called professor who is not a professor, it's an imposter, Dave, called her out claiming that this email could be fake. And he said, it sounded like translated German. I cannot judge that. I'm German myself. I haven't the slightest doubt that this email is real. But on the other hand, it's a fair point if this attracted significant attention and that's what it did. What could you do to prove it? I can't prove to you that this email is real, so you'll have to take my word for it. And the question is if she could publish it. And I think there is no reason why she shouldn't. There is no criminal law involved. She's not a lawyer. She's not She's not a psychologist, no profession for which it would be forbidden to publish that. And the question is, uh, could that person, that scientist, take her to court, sue her? And as a matter of principle, yes, if you disclose private email. But this is not a disclosure of private facts, private facts in the first place, because it's not obviously not too private. But even in that case, the public interest outweighs these privacy concerns. So what you could think of is copyright infringement if you publish it verbatim what she did, but still it is more than more a legitimate disclosure than a typical case for copyright. If she alters the text, she would on the other hand risk defamation and then the person could claim she manipulated or edited or rephrased it in a way to make her point stronger. So I think the correct way is just to publish it as it was written and also to analyze and to comment. That's what she did. There is also no non-disclosure agreement because the person asked for confidentiality. Okay. But he didn't wait for her to agree. So there is no legal binding agreement. At the very end, there is also a whistleblower protection from the First Amendment. So to conclude, there is no reason why she should not publish that email with the full name of the researcher. It may be considered not nice or people may choose not to have her as a friend. But after all, she's a journalist. And if you did something wrong, which is of public interest, there is no law that protects you from being exposed. It's as simple as that. I discussed US law here, which should be relevant for YouTube. Yeah, and of course, I'm curious how this will play out. As I said, I don't have the slightest doubt that this email is real, but maybe she could have done a little better in publishing it. I also wrote her an email asking whether she confirmed the existence of that person, because in theory, it could be also another person, but I don't think so. And people have also criticized that you should have published a screenshot. Okay. But anyway, in view of this backslash, maybe the best thing is just full disclosure and say who this top scientist was. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, next time we will talk about more about the physics, subscribe to this channel.